yesterday's video disasters um gopro disaster whatever it is is it gopro the gopro is crappity cam link seems a little bit crappity i don't know what's what but um hopefully we're gonna work on some something that actually works today i just got a top-down view from uh from another gopro but it's in webcam mode won't be the prettiest thing but i think it i think it'll work um so this is about um uh, tremolo stabilizer things let's see what they got on on amazon so i think last week or so i, I showed installing one of these it's like a uh, single uh like the esp arming adjuster that i've been backstop i also a couple weeks ago put in one of these this alnikov i think was the name of it um a dual it's like pure brass unit really kind of cool um but there's also this version right here and uh this looks like the esp one or the old ibanez one or whatever actually i think the ibanez one was plastic right there's like some plastic parts in it and we just saw that video with steve i and his and um this is this version has it's almost like a ball bearing here in the end I've got one in, I've got the single version in this guitar right now. I'm going to change it out to the dual version. The single version seems to be doing a very good job. Um, but I'm extra paranoid. I, I'm, I used to try those Geldo black boxes and they didn't quite do what I wanted. Um, I'm going to give this one a try and I'm still not got it in my brain exactly right about where to put certain parts of these but um i'm gonna put this one in today and let's uh let's take a look so here's uh boy see this this uh need some better diffuse light huh so this is uh there's and we'll pop this open in a second let me get let me get the victim and so trying out my new guitar tech uh, workbench kind of thingy. Turn on some softer light. You know, I, I wonder how uh, how well would this light go? Yeah, that doesn't seem to be enough, does it? That's uh, let's, let's get the rest of this light on. It's a little grainy. Um, I'm trying. Uh, the HDMI with the GoPro out was way better. I'm trying to get my hands on some kind of camcorder or something. I'm going to do better. But uh, I could really use some video help, actually. If anybody knows some stuff, please let me know. So, here comes the victim here. going to be my very... Oh, see that? Did you... Yeah, look at look at all that. What is that pixelization all that crap going on? It doesn't happen to HDMI. It's only on this uh, USB webcam mode. This is my scalloped uh, ESP with the Oil Slick Floyd Rose Pro, which is the most important part of any guitar is to have as much Oil Slick on there as you can possibly get. And then after that, make sure it's scalloped. And so, and this new cradle out. Let's see how, how this does. see if it gouges out my strings or whatever i uh, guess that's kind of cool that's um much more comfortable to work on than i'm used to look i still got the plastic on here i actually took a router to this guitar when it was brand new the first day i had it in order to um get this tremolo and it came with the floyd rose original okay so let me uh i bought a spring tool but i i can't really get it to work i'm gonna just brush my fingers um, need kind of a hardcore screwdriver here, aren't I? Yeah, you got it. I'm really working up my my uh, tool kit. Just want to pop the spring cavity open, and really, I should be doing this with an electric screwdriver, but don't have one i got drills and stuff but i think i'd like a slightly less hardcore one and i can't really zoom with this thing i don't know what i'm doing with it so you're just gonna bear with me i'll hold things up if i can so that you can see them better 
What is this exactly resting on? Is it resting on my bridge? Yes, it is. I don't. I don't like that. That's going to make this difficult. So let me. Hopefully, I don't need any more tools from in here. But so this, this will make a perfectly good spacer. There we go. Okay. Oh, see, I still need to get some, like, paint can lids and stuff. I'm, I'm trying to get more organized. I mean, you guys who know me know that's, like, the opposite of who I am. So I'm I'm trying to be better. Okay, so here, I don't know how well you're going to see this. This is the old one. This is a, this is a single, and, and it is working very well. Um, let's take a look at this. So when you're diving, it does nothing. doesn't hurt you at all. Um, you probably run a little bit more spring tension than you're used to, uh, in order to make it hit well. So the point is, is when this thing, when you let go of this and it comes bouncing back, it's going to slam into this little rod right here. And that would be a dive only if it, if that was all there was to it, but there's a spring here. And once you overcome that spring pressure, you can pull up now. If you listen to Steve Vai, he's doing crazy whammy bar tricks. So I, I was surprised to see this thing in his guitar. But um, I've been trying it and actually having a pretty good time of it. So, you know, back in the day, I used trem setters and stuff. But but for the last, like, 10 years, pretty much, I've just had a locked up tremolo uh, or a dive only, sorry. And um, over last year, I actually experimented with... Um, having a fully floating Floyd. And I liked it. I liked the, uh, there was some, there was some freedom it gave me that I liked. Uh, and I might just get another, put another guitar fully floating or whatever. Actually, I have uh, one of them here. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't quite, I, I'm just, I'm just too paranoid for this, I think is, is really what it is. Uh, so, I'm going to take this guy out, and it's very small screws on this thing, so I'm probably going to, a little bit worried. They're tiny. And I don't want to lose this. I, I have a feeling that, that this is probably perfect, this single that I have here. But um, give, I want to give the Duel a try. I just, I, I probably, you know, I tried setting the Duel on my other guitar, that big brass one. Um, a little bit as loose as it would go. And it, I think that's actually how I have it set. I, I play eights, you know, so I'm not playing the, the stiffest strings anyways. And, uh, you know, you still feel it hit. I, I tried a couple things like some rubber O-rings and stuff to try and take the, take the shock out of it, but no real luck. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do with this, put these back in. I'm going to tape over it so I don't lose these screws. But I don't have any duct tape right now. So. Really, I'll just hot glue them in there like I do with everything else. Well, and these, these screws are so small, I don't really... I'm kind of scared to drill holes for them, but... Uh, the other thing is, you don't want to go into... This could be your pickup cavity, for all I know. Let's see. Take a look at where these are going to go. So the screws, like up here, which yeah, it's right below your um, bridge pickup. Oh, turn on the AC. It's going to get a little bit noisier. Oh, sorry about that. With my head. <laughs> A little bit noisier. There is. I just had a new one. <laughs> so yeah, I'm still. I'm still trying to work out how to be an organized person. So cut me some slack here. I'm working on it. And I just had here this. 
get this one apart. Comes with the pick that I don't want. Comes with an Allen wrench, which, uh, let's see, I didn't need for the other one because it was really easy to get around it. But this one is going to be a little bit trickier, I think. Let's take a look. One of the cool things about this one compared to the um, one I'd installed last time, let me pull that one back up. This guy. It's it's not bad, but it's a little tricky to get your, your screwdriver in here. This. This guy. Be a lot easier. Okay, wow. Yeah, light's not doing anybody any favors there. Oops. That doesn't help. Okay. I don't know if it's better just no lights. You see that they're in the middle there. It's a little bit easier to do. I um there's so many different sites telling you about how to install these. I so let, let's look at what these things do, okay, first of all. So when the tremolo hits this part, it's, uh, it, wow. Okay, I'm going to kill that. See if there's, <laughs> see I'm holding up Lord of the Rings or something. Not sure if this light helps at all, but... When I, wow. When you press on this, see that the plunger goes. That's when you're diving. And this is the, the spring tension that has you up against the um, tremolo sustain block or whatever you call it. And so one of these screws, really, its job is to tighten or loosen that spring. You know, set the spring tension. And the other spring, the other screw... The other thumb screw is to say how far back this guy goes. So where does the plunger start? Um, so if you, I'm thinking that I really want to just put it right up to the end. And I, I know there's a reason not to do that. Unlike the, unlike the other one, this this part of it doesn't slam into anything. So I'm tempted to put these guys flush. The other thing is, um, these are so easy to turn. All of them. I'm, I'm talking the ESP one, the Ibanez one, all of them, even the real ones, whatever. They're so easy to turn that you really think this is going to come loose on. Uh, during while you're using it so if i put it in like this there's not enough spring tension to keep it from just slamming into into the end there so am i limiting myself by putting it on like that because the minimum the minimum is going to have to at least spring it but wow, okay let me think about this so the very minimum position this thing could be, I mean, if I if I turn this side, turn this guy, so I can have it all the way out there and have it stiff, but the furthest I can be out and even touch the spring, like this, this is going to make this hard to set. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make this with no slack here. You'll notice that in all their pictures, they're they're showing it with this kind of opened up. I'm I'm really worried that how easy it is to spin this thing that it's just gonna move around and you're not gonna really keep your settings. So I, I keep thinking I'm gonna put Loctite or something on here. Not sure, but I'm gonna just barely just engage the spring. So either way, I'm making this spring short. So let me. Let me do this the other way. So I'm going to back this out until it's flush with the front here. Let's see if they give us instructions. How about that? Definitely not on the uh, on the packaging, but 
Plastic Lily. Okay. Not really give us any instructions. Um, packaging foods. Well, let's just type this in. Yeah, no idea how how happy I am that nowadays with Amazon you can just go buy all this stuff. Whereas before, forget it. You know, these there's some of them like you couldn't even bring them into the country and stuff. I mean, just crazy. Um, so here's the Alnikov. This is the other one that I had. Let's see what they say here. So this is how I did this one. This is just pretty. Oh, that's cool. I wonder. So I wonder if they have one for the music lily. Um, Let's include instructions. There's no instructions. Um, let's see if maybe at their website they have. Oh, goody. Page not found at their website. Let's see. Uh, let's go to. Oh, I guess they're changing everything now. So. Yeah. Okay, let me, let's see the old one. Maybe it's, maybe it's to the. Okay. Uh, yeah, there we go. Wow, $28 back then on that one. Compared to what you had to pay to try and bring an Ivan S one into the country back in the day. That's crazy. All right, so no no instructions. Yay. Okay. Um, what this one? So the real place to go for this stuff anyway is uh, last word in tremolo stabilization, whatever it's... Um, Joe Animaker guy. Emmanaker, Emmanaker. So here's the backstop. So you see it's a bunch of plastic stuff. Kind of strange, but they, they put the screws in the middle where it'd be easy. I like that. Um, how to install. Where's the... See, I don't like any of this. I'm sorry. All right, I'm just going to pop this sucker in here. Um, if I'm wrong, let's see. I'm going to I'm gonna get this. I'm going to take it all the way out to the, to the end so it's flush. Okay. Get it flush. So, really, you don't need that much pull. It's, it's, it's way overkill what I usually do. So I'm going to tighten this spring until it actually does something. And then, you know, getting these springs a little, uh, the, the dual thing fine-tuned is a little bit of a problem, but um, we'll see how that actually plays out in the real world. There's a little bit of play here, which uh, could make some trouble. Some old eyeballs, which are definitely making trouble. Now, why do these look so different? One has a lot more. Uh, 
All right, something is bizarre here. Let me try this again. I'm going to screw this all the way in again, man. Sorry. Are these things different lengths? Don't tell me they, they messed up big time. I don't think they did. So if I... I, I want to have enough, but this is actually a lot to pull back on. It's kind of... You, you you think this is a very small amount when you're um when you're pulling your bridge up, but if you really look at how far that is, it's it's pretty pretty crazy. Let me um so if I if I were to pitch up, it's not very far before that thing's about to pop some strings. So it's really only tiny. So this would be fine. I just I don't want to get stuck and limit myself. It really looks strange when, when we got these. I wonder if the springs are different sizes. I wouldn't be surprised. Like nothing surprises me when it comes to comes to this stuff now. Uh I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna put this flush again. Let's see if I can't get it a little bit closer this time. Trouble is with it this far, so see there's no spring tension. The maximum spring tension I'll be able to bring to bear is, is gonna be a lot less, and that could be a problem. But let's see. You know, and, and nobody's going to die. I can always move the, move this hole, uh, you know, move the thing and re-drill a couple holes. Okay, here, here's my problem. This is definitely weird. Uh, one of these springs is, like, way more tension than the other, as far as I can tell. Oh, wait a second. Okay, well, here is a huge problem, I think. Unless, yes, this shouldn't come off. Holy crap. Okay, that's the problem. Let's see. I'll take this apart real quick. I'll show you. Whoa, this one came off too. What? Okay. In the other ones that I have, these don't come off. And I really don't want them moving. Like, that's, that's not good. Okay. So before we even start on this, we're going to make a little modification to this, uh, to this product. So how can I do this? I should go get some Loctite red, never mind even the blue. Um, yeah, this is not, this is not happy. Like, that's cool that you can unscrew it. It really gives you some, um, some options, but uh, there's so many moving parts at that point that, that this is just not cool. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe I'll just take a, well, I don't really want to take pliers to it because that would, uh, that might get it stuck when I go to, when it, when it moves through the little tunnel there. So I can take an Allen wrench on one side and lock the sucker in. But I really don't want to clamp down on it because... If I scratch it, it could it could make some trouble. So I'm gonna I'm gonna crank the Allen wrench in, and uh, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go grab some Loctite real quick. Oh, see, I already tightened it so much I can't get it off. So with Loctite, you could actually spin this sucker out and use it to get a lot more adjustment than you could otherwise. But all the other ones I've seen on these, you can't get uh, this part off. So let me um let me pull this back up. So like this guy, the 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 ball end is part of this shaft right here, so it doesn't come off of it. I mean, that's that's actually kind of nice that it can, but uh, I don't think I want to for my use. So let me um, let me go find, let me go get my lock. I'll be right back. If I can find my car keys, which I can't. <sighs> car keys. Not in my pocket. Starting to get hungry again. <laughs> my phone. Yeah. 
I hear it. I hear my keys. Where are they? Yeah, who cares? Okay, let me go grab my Loctite. Sorry. I think, uh, you know, ideally this end may be put on with some JB Weld or Red Loctite or something. But um, this whole thing could use Loctite. I really would feel a lot more confident if, if it just couldn't spin out accidentally. I'm really, I'm, I'm watching these guitars change a little bit because of that. And I, uh, I think we should fix that. So I'm just going to Loctite this whole damn thing. Uh, it's not going to be ideal. But let's just do what we can. So hopefully there's still Loctite in this thing. I don't know if it's a new one. Just got a new bottle, but I'm not sure if this is it. Stuff is like crazy money too. But what is it right now, I guess, right? Um, I'm going to Loctite this whole thing. And uh, I don't know that it's really going to work well, but I, I think it's going to add just a little bit of vibration proof for us. And uh, I wish I had some rubber grips right now that I could just tighten this down just the, the tiniest bit more. Oh, okay. So I just did something very wrong. <laughs> okay. Got to pay more attention. All right. That's the side. I was going to hold it by the Allen wrench side, so... Yeah. Having trouble getting the Loctite out of here. I don't know if this is a new bottle or not. And there's so little in it anyway. It's such a, a rip, man. Not gonna be ideally perfectly coated, but we'll get as close as we can. Now the uh let's see, put this back a little bit too. So if I had something strong, what did I do? I had some rubber like rubber tweezers. I could probably use the back side of a good set of pliers. Let me let me give that a try. I just do it with all my pliers. See, I'm, I'm trying to get more organized, but like I say, old habits just had piles of really cool oh, here. This way. Yeah, I just bought a box to organize everything, and I put it in there, so of course I can't find it. All right. One trick, if you have to grab stuff that you don't want to mar, find 
the pliers. And of course, you could put rubber rubber teeth on these things. What I usually do is I just use the um, edge of it. And I can get a pretty good grip. And, uh, not scratch anything. Of course, in this case, I put the metal part of this thing on there, which is absolutely horrible idea. Try something else. Be able to do with some scissors. Anyhow, so now this is Loctited. This is in there pretty good. I don't think I'm going to be spinning this out by hand accidentally. So put this back in. Note how this goes. Now, it's probably a good idea to Loctite the inside of the, uh, the female side of the threads. But I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to get it in there that well. Let me see if it clears it out when I, I put it on. If it does, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll reapply. As you can see, it's starting to pull up. So this is this is typical with Loctite. So when this pulls up, one of the things you can do is turn it around so that you can be sure Get a good chunk on the female end of the threads. So you, you can already feel just the liquid in here has given us some resistance, which is which is good. Like I say, that I'm worried the other ones are just spinning themselves out. I don't know how good this stuff is for your skin. And I can always put more on here. Well, I'll feel a whole lot better with this Loctite on here. It's not, it's not perfect. So, bozo move number one. Not thinking about how this goes together. Try this again. Put this through. Now yeah, put the screw in there. And I'm really clearing this Loctite out at this point. So, after we apply. And the part that I really care about is going to be wherever it starts to bite on the uh, on the, on the uh, spring. So I'm really going to get it over here. I have to go run over a nap and get some more log tight. This is, this is not really coming out. Or is this still have some in it? Well, it still seems to, too. That's the part that matters, is way up here. Wherever that, wherever that spring starts to really work. And, uh, bozo move number two. You're gonna be able to get the spring in here. Yep. Oh, it does go through. Oops. Wow, okay. That's bozo move number three. So we want to get it on the end here. Probably really do want to get it on the female side of this one. We want to get it on the threads. Whatever this is, whatever I end up with, is going to be way better than without it, I think. Like, there could be a reason that they don't stick Loctite on here, but 
not really seeing it. Okay, that's pretty much flush. So we've got a, a tremendous amount of spring pressure here already. So I'm going to back this out. I say we do definitely want some preload here though. You now it's funny once I once I screwed this thing all the way in, this is uh, making a whole lot more sense. Okay, so see now there's only a tiny little gap there, so I feel a lot better about this. So good thing. Um, do I really need to take this apart to Loctite? I don't think so. Some Loctite on these threads. Jeez, man, I swear I just bought a new one. Is this the new one? So chintzy with this stuff. Um... So you don't want to put it on with the... That's yeah, probably the best way to do it anyway. Take my Allen wrench and just goop it on there. You know, with it off, I can get it more uniform around it. But if I, if I do just get the... Screw it all the way in there, it'll get in there from the threads. You, you saw how it pulls up anyway. So... That should be fine. Just got to get it in here. And then remind me to go to Napa and get some more Loctite. Be pretty confident. That. So we're going to do the same thing and take the Allen wrench off first. And I want to hold it with something firm, but really, I don't see myself putting that much pressure on it. But it's going to make it come out of something like that. So let's just uh, get this thread this way out so it makes sure we got some uniform coverage here the only thing i could see that would loosen this ball back up is if um if the loctite grabs so hard on the other parts that i can't spin them but i don't think that's going to happen never say never but I want to, while we're doing this, I want to give some advice to some artists out there, uh, especially up and comers. Maybe you're you're trying to get things done, and um, you call people who are working in the industry. You know, you 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 network, and that's the smartest thing you can do. You got to talk to other people and stuff. But if if you want to get something done, like maybe you wanna you want to meet these people, you want to work with some certain musicians you want to um you have so you have some kind of goal that you're trying to achieve and it, and it requires you know uh some resources or at least a good word from um an established artist or or you know whatever somebody working in the stuff that where you want to work um i gotta tell you that People get calls all the time from all manners of weirdos and pie in the sky stuff. But this music industry, it's it's made out of dreams, right? It's it's made out of crazy ideas. It's made out of people um, t 
taking on stuff they got no business taking on and just being crazy ambitious and, and doing neat things. And so there's nothing wrong with trying to uh, get a hold of people and what I'm trying to say. When when you're when you're trying to get other musicians or other people to, to work with you and do things, uh, it's really important to kind of have a plan. So you know, it's just calling people up willy nilly and, and uh, you know, just going, Hey, I want to make a million dollars and hang out with you. You know, like, well, how's that going to work? You know, you, you really got to have a plan and see here. We go again. This thing seems a little bit. If, if you're, you know, I mean, lots of people are open to let's, let's do whatever, throw some spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks or whatever. But generally, uh, people want to know that you got a plan that you um you have an idea of, of how to get where you're trying to go and uh wow, this is really tightening up quickly maybe this uh, loctite was a bad idea <laughs> maybe not though i i really i really would rather it stayed put I, I can always overcome it and once loctite dries it just becomes kind of a, um just a little bit thicker kind of thread sealer kind of deal And it, it may be that, that this goes exactly where I wanted to go in the first place anyway. Or maybe i got to hurry up and install this. But, okay, so anyway, when you call people up, you want to get involved with them and stuff, have a plan. Because there's a bunch of wishy-washies that call up and want to get you involved with their stuff and want you to get in. And really all they're just doing is asking you for your money. And I don't got any money, so never mind that. But... You know, you get in these long conversations with people with, and they got no plan whatsoever. And they're, they're trying to, they want you to contact people for them or they want you to put some work into stuff. And you're like, well, what are you, what are you trying to do? Wow. Okay. This Loctite really locked this up. Okay. So I might end up with some problems here. Um, wow. I can easily... Okay, so what am I going to say? So here, what's going on? I think I might have loctited this sucker in place. No way. <laughs> no way. Like, I can't even push this. Did I glue this thing in place? Or is that spring just that stiff? no way that springs that stiff so um yeah this loctite may have been a dumb idea we um uh... <laughs> yeah that might be why they didn't do it put some pliers on here and see if i can't turn it and and you know honestly if this does work then i'm not going to worry about this thing moving around now this still seems Like these are different. Okay. Let me just spin this real quick and see if that's what happened. Did it get locked up in there? It's really interesting. So I, I loctited the Allen wrench hole. <laughs> wow. Usually Loctite doesn't work this good, but I guess, you know, we're talking about little tiny things where normally I'm trying to Loctite up bike parts. I I've actually can't even get my oh man okay what kills Loctite is it acetone or alcohol Let's see can't remember Let's see if alcohol does it if not I do have acetone that's gonna not be good if I can't get an out. Yeah, I screwed up, guys. <laughs> okay, so now we know at least that the uh, Loctite will definitely <laughs> hold this sucker down. This is Loctite blue. This ain't even the strong stuff, man. Wow. All right, so I, I've got to I gotta get that clear somehow. Can't remember who's out there. Somebody tell them. Somebody tell me how do you get off? How do you? How do you break blue Loctite? 
Uh, is it acetone? Ooh, lock. Okay. Apply heat. No, I don't want to heat it. That's for the red, anyway. Well, rubbing alcohol dissolve Loctite. Um... Oxide. Best way is to get rid of. Let's do it. Yeah, it's saying locked out. Let me get that one. I'm really glad that this is holding this hard though, because I, I, I'm probably gonna lock type my other stuff once I have it set. But it probably shouldn't do it before you got it figured out. Okay, so I don't want the alcohol to wreck the Loctite that I want. Okay. Need something really skinny to break that out of there. It's just amazing. You know, Loctite doesn't do all that much on your bike, right? I mean, it, it helps keep it from vibrating loose, but it's not like it smashes the stuff in place or anything like this is just nuts okay how far is this supposed to go on the way in okay man i can't even spin that thing turn it on to that was unreal definitely glued it into place <laughs> I definitely don't want uh, Loctite interfering with the with the plunger action of this thing. That is for sure. That would be awful. I definitely need to get this uh, sound head clear. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do it from the outside. Uh, this is the only way to tighten that thing. So. Got to get that cleared out. Oh, yeah. I had oh I just got some new tweezers and stuff. Oh, and so let's see. Let's uh, let's finally give this guy a try here. So I should be able to see. I don't know if you see this. This is a uh a magnifying thing with bobber. And I can see, yeah. Take some tweezers. Wow. Just incredible what Loctite does on, on weaker parts, on smaller stuff. Like, man, if it held our bikes together like this... We'd never use that red Loctite, you know? That stuff's nasty when you got to get it off of there. This is not so bad. I mean, on, on your bike, you know, whatever tool you have is going to overcome blue Loctite. No problem. But I really like when the, the type that dries up into that blue plastic. Like that. That's really... Then you feel secure about stuff. All right, this is still not... Everything all that well. It's just incredible. I was really worried that. There we go. Okay, so that's messing this up. I can't definitely can't have anything interfering with the the plunger action of these things. These springs feel so different. the alcohol fix this okay, you hear that little click that's that's gonna be this thing not returning to where it's supposed to be because of some some binding you know any kind of friction or binding in your tremolo system is just it's just curtains for you you know so 
I can't have any of that. I'll tell you what, I feel a lot better having Loctite on here. It, it really, I mean, yeah, it's going to be hard to, to manipulate, but boy, is it keep this thing from feeling so, so easy to overwhelm. Like, it just seems like, you know, in normal use, you're going to, as you, as this thing hits, you're going to, um, things are going to come loose. You know, they, these two screws are going to come loose with this Loctite. I don't think that's happening. But I, yeah, I still don't quite have it figured out. Though. Let's see. I don't want to mess up these new tweezers, but better the tweezers than the trolley. Still not. Oh, there we go. Okay. That is starting to feel solid. Okay. So this spring feels a lot looser than the other one. About trace is gonna go. Wow, I can't even spin it. <laughs> uh oh. What does that mean? Which one just spun? Okay, this one is still a lot stiffer than this one. That could be a problem for me later on, but let's just see. All right, so I'm going to stop messing with the Loctite for now if I really need to throw. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, Skip, this is, is acetone good for the... Um, Taking off blue Loctite, though. I guess acetone's kind of good for taking off anything, including your fingers. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Here's one problem. I'm probably going to have to yank these springs. And that's going to make it a little bit hard to tell where to put this thing exactly. And I really wanted to try my new spring tool, but it, it didn't really didn't work. It did hurt. I'm just going to try these uh, needle nose pliers and see if they'll do what I need them to do. Uh, first, I should really should block this tremolo where it is. That was dumb. I should have done this first. That's not going to be exactly right, but it's going to be close. Luckily, this thing's got a lot of range of adjustability, so... If I do it too much, I you know, like you saw, we got we got plenty of room we can go. Okay. So put it up against there. I'd love it if it were straightish, but I don't think it's gonna be. Okay, so one thing I'm I'm a little worried about here. Um gotta make this one slightly longer, I think. Yep. You can actually see it in here. So that's going to be the Allen wrench, and it's going to be this screw that matters this time. So I want to go into it more. Oh, shoot. All right, it just stripped. So that, uh, that Loctite may have been a stupid idea. So. Okay. 
Yeah, that was a bad idea. Okay. I need to make this longer, just a little bit. And that's really got. Oh. See about this acetone, I guess. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been doing poorly on the projects lately. I'm just screwing up left and right. Acetone. Do not want that to dump. Yeah, I'm really going to have a hard time. I guess I should have let it dry first. Really, all I just did is glue this sucker together, which is not really what I want to do. It's not like that's going to penetrate in there all that well either. I gotta do is spin this guy. It's just stripping. Ah, shoot! Man, I don't, I don't have too many good choices on on how to handle it past that. So this is my hammer. This in. Yeah, that's a hammer. So I'm going to have to find a way to lever that guy. Using some uh, Archimedes. What's the guy's name? With the, he had a lever big enough he could move the world. But I don't know if that just spun it or if I just stripped I think it's just stripping yeah so I screwed up I screwed up bad All right. how are we gonna get out of this I could I could grab the middle with the pliers but I don't think it's gonna be enough to I don't think I'm gonna be able to hold it tight enough to spin it I uh, Loctite is strong <laughs> Bad, bad, uh, bad move. You guys should have stopped me. They stop, idiot. Yeah, see, that's not even holding. Oh, boy. I don't want to mess up that spring either. See if I can spin this guy out first. So I guess next time the lesson is get the get the thing all the way in place before you mess with the lock tight. Okay. So. Oh boy. Acetone, sorry. Now I got a heat gun. I can heat this up, or I could stick a soldering iron in this tip and break the heat, make it with heat that way. It's soldering iron. Yeah, I mean, I really didn't expect it to be that um, that strong. We know what it does on our bikes, you know. Certainly ain't this. That's good to know. And I can do this in the end. Let's uh, I'll, I'll get this working first, and then I'll, you know, do all this craziness. I 
definitely stick my soldering iron in there. That's a bummer. I just... Whatever. Sorry. So again, another short job is turning into a, uh, to a logistical nightmare. <laughs> you know, I wonder if this is just a junky Allen key or really that hard to break through this Octane. Uh, yeah. Is this solder tip going to be pointy enough to even get in there? Huh. Or am I going to solder the end and then make it completely useless? Well, I wish I had a pointy tip for this iron. I may have better Allen wrenches for my bike parts that I can use to take this thing apart, but... You're not seeing a dabble, do you? Probably should have... Probably should have started a little conservative before I went full hog with the, with the Loctite. I'm just going to hold this iron up to it. I've got heat guns and things too, but I'm, I have a feeling this, uh, hopefully this soldering iron will do. What I don't want to do is get solder in there and then I can't get the Allen wrench in there. This is brass, so who knows what the inside is. May brass may heat more. Hopefully, hopefully it just heats the Loctite up. Uh, what a bozo! That was uh, call here in Hawaii a baboo's move. I've got to get a way to lock something on this part. But... God, it's incredible. Oh, it's really on there. I really screwed that up. Let's see who will spin. This guy's spinning okay. I better hope I don't have to move that thing's length, I guess, because holy crap. I could just lock it in place and, and just use the other piece to move it in and out. It won't do it very well. I really should get this loose. Really need... Really screwed this up. Got some much higher quality Allen wrenches I can go grab. I'm gonna go out to my car, grab I'll grab better Allen wrenches, and I'm um, gonna leave this thing heating up. And I do that. It's the stuff firemen's nightmares are made out of. You guys, if you see this thing jump off the desk and start burning holes everywhere, scream and I'll come running. Oh. Not even, not even able to get out there yet. Here we go. <laughs> this will do it. 
Yeah, there we go. That should heat up. Be right back. Find my car keys. Sometimes, when you're really in a pinch, a torque, torque wrench can um, go in and take a stripped Allen wrench and make it work, but let's hope we don't have to get there. Don't know that... I have these really strong chrome ones, but I don't know if it's the right size. Let's see. It's too big. Okay, plan B here. Probably only really get one shot at this. Hopefully that soldering iron's heat has done something. I can really feel this guy heated up. In there. Oh, wow. Woo! Okay. Open my, melting my table. This guy is way hot. All right, so. In there. Think it's spinning. Yay! All right. Okay, so you guys don't let me do these bozo moves like this, okay, please. <laughs> Yay. Okay, now, even though I've now I've broken the, the Loctite, it still has way more resistance than it did before, which is which is what I really wanted. That's the whole point of this, right? Is to to make sure that that we can it's not just gonna spin itself out because it really feels like it's gonna. Um, yeah, I, my red guitar, my normal guitar that I play, you can really feel it on there. All right, so I'm spinning this one. I'm going to give it a full turn just so I know I'm completely clear. I, I still want this. You know, the other way was back in the day when you put the plastic bag over it and then you melted the plastic bag. You could heat shrink, but that's really hardcore. So I just get these guys about even. Oh, that soldering iron really did the trick, I think. So. Get there. But I really, you know, I, I know that it was a big detour, but wow, do I feel better about, about the stability of this. And then now, this one won't plunge. So did the, uh, did the brass get so warm that it... That it is, it's not plunging now. It's feeling pretty good. I got to get all the friction. Just like just like on your nut and everything else. It's, it's all about what's binding and what's making friction and stuff. Definitely. Don't want these things binding. I'm so glad that worked. Not that these things are expensive. It's very affordable compared to what, you know, what these guys, crazy people on eBay are charging for, like, reissues of the Ibanez ones or the ESP ones or whatever. I think ESPs, you can buy them again. Not sure. 
Yeah, see, this is completely binding. Is that the heat or is it, is it the Loctite? I almost want to pull this thing out of here and clean it up. Good. Yeah, it won't even pull back to that. This is critical, but the spring has to counteract. the tremolo springs tell you what i'm gonna let's spin this all the way out and i'm gonna clean up that end sorry so this, this could have gone in a lot quicker and easier if i hadn't done these uh these things but you know i, I keep kicking myself that i didn't put loctite on the other ones so now i know put it on after when you're <laughs> and only use a little bit Or let it dry first. That that's probably was going to be the better way. If I would have just put this on and let it dry, it would have been fine. Because really, I just want that thicker. I want that plastic junk on the to coat the threads, and that way, um, it just won't spin out so easy. You can see it. That's what I want. That little chunk right there. That's that's good. Okay, so what? We gotta find out what's binding on this um this guy. It's as if the you know I did heat it up with the soldering iron. I mean, is that really what's going on here? Like it is, it is stiff, man. Yeah, these <laughs> I think the brass expanded. I I really think that's what happened. I think the brass expanded. Um, I could go dunk this real quick. Maybe that's what I should do. Because now it's acting like it's threaded. Wow. Acetone the hell out of everything. But certainly the outsides of this don't need um, to be locked tight. It's not. It's not what it's for. Yeah, sorry guys. I know this was supposed to be something else, but... Guess what? We learned something, or at least I did. Maybe you guys are already watching this and saying, hey, dummy, don't put Loctite on that. You know how much you love your Loctite, but it's not for this. Really, did I? I'm going to go dunk this. Okay, no idea how, how bad the water just messed up the Loctite, but I can always put more on. So did I really just heat this thing up so much that it's can't slide through anymore? That's crazy. I don't really see that being a possibility. Did I just permanently expand the brass? Was it that bad? Or is that just, is there Loctite on the inside of this thing? That's really what's happening. It's so weird, man. The other one wasn't even thinking about binding like that. This one feels pretty good. You know me, I'm, I'm looking at this and going, oh, I wonder if I should put more Loctite on here. <laughs> After all that, I'm like, you know, wonder, should I put more Loctite? It worked. So here's the problem with this one. It's just Loctite. Off of there.
This really has to go pretty clear. Pretty easily. Sam this. Yeah, I really screwed up. Crazy, huh? Please all that surprise if I screw up, but surprised how much this long tape does. Keep forgetting to pick up more sandpaper at the hardware store. It would really, really, really help right now. Really fine sandpaper. Let's see how this feels now. That's pretty good. About this. How's this plunger feel here? Pretty good. I don't want to spin that one out too, but I think it's okay. Like the old Pontiac guys say, it'll clearance itself. I can still feel some resistance on here, which is which is the whole point of that Loctite in the first place. That's what I want to feel. I'm feeling too much resistance. I mean, if I won't be able to get an Allen wrench in here, that would suck. But I think we'll get it right. What's what's binding here? It's really difficult. Yeah, that's flush. A little bit wiggly. This one. It's flush. It's a lot wiggly. Okay. I still might end up putting this up in the wrong place. But I got plenty of room to go. Plenty of room. Okay. So the other problem is. My springs were in an arrow configuration, and I think they're going to hit. So you could put a one in the center. You could put them on the edges. I got plenty of room to go in, so I'm just going to put them on the edges. So that's going to be okay. If I need more tension, I can always put it on the center one. So the trick is going to be now um, drilling some pilot holes. They're so the screws are so small that I almost don't want to put a um put a pilot hole really don't want to go through to my pickups i'm afraid that the screws might be even skinnier than my skinniest drill bit let me see 16th
Screws too wide or holes too small? Screws are too wide to fit through the holes. Uh, well, that sounds bad, but it's kind of a good problem to have in this case, I think. Screws. I really, <laughs> I really ended up taking a lot of time. One sixteenth. So that's the size. I don't know. I'm going to be able to bite if I use a sixteenth inch screw. Um, I'm going to try. Here, you know what? I got, I got wood right here. I can test on the side of my bench, my drill. Yeah, it's just crazy. Like I'm an hour in and I barely did anything yet. But it's uh kind of how these things go sometimes. And it's all because I want to mess with that Loctite. And I think I'm still right. I think the I think the Loctite is important. So I'm gonna put a sixteenth inch. I really think these are thick sixteenth inch screws, so I I don't know if it's gonna have enough bite if I have to use this, but we'll find out right now. And again, I don't want to get into that uh, drill my my pickup. Right? That would be that would be exceedingly bad. Okay, so I'm just going to test it on my bench here. So if I go straight in, if I go straight in, it's going to get any bite whatsoever. Really tiny screws. I don't know. Feels a little, a little loose. Maybe I'll, I'll just start the very beginning. I'm just doing this by hand and by eyeball, so. So I just did a little bit. Tape the drill to allow max. Yes, good idea. Yeah, I'm just going to deal with the inconsistency of my full water. That's the way to go, man. It, I really felt good uh, playing for the first time in my life with um, full floating bridge. But I have to I have to replace parts so often on people's stuff. Oh, hey, so that's what the guy was talking about. Look at that. Wow. The, the screw actually doesn't fit through there. <laughs> nice. Let's see about, I guess that's a good thing I got my drill out then. Huh? Let's just uh, let's get all these. Nope. So that, well, that'll tell you then. This is the right size drill bit. So I'm going to need a slightly bigger drill, but these screws are not going through. Um, I mean, it's kind of good because it's going to keep it from sliding around. Not ideal. So yeah, uh, I have to replace and, and record so many other parts constantly that I, I need them to be locked in. I need them to be locked in place. So what I did is I, I made I made two of my guitars fully floating, one set with ESPs and one set with blackouts, and then I made the other guitars uh, dive only, and that should have been good enough for me. But um, I tend to play. I tend to play those two main guitars that I had fully floating, and it's just too much. Just, uh, I don't have enough confidence in the tuning. I hate out-of-tune stuff. I mean, I, you guys know that. Make sure I don't use that 330 seconds when I'm uh, putting the screw holes in, or pilot holes. Okay. Okay, I should not have an open bottle of acetone. That's so unsafe, that cap. Nasty. Okay. Machine parts. Hey, man. I'll tell you what, uh, instead of, 
having to drill out something and instead of dealing with these nuts on eBay that they were taking this thirty dollar twenty dollar whatever part and and they're all going for hundreds or even thousands like holy crap man oh yeah see I, I don't even know how the torque settings work on this drill but maybe one of these days I'll read a manual okay where's Where's that pilot hole? Oh, I put the hole. I don't normally have this problem. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh no! Dropped it inside. That's not where I wanted to go. Uh. And here, here it comes. Ooh! If I can just get this first one, I'm all set after that. I think. Feels like it has a lot of bite to it. Nice. Nice. Okay. Now, what's going to really suck is if this is too far. No, never mind. I got plenty of adjustability. So never mind. There's no suck. No suck. Yeah, I see ya. And uh, I will read up. Yeah, thanks for that. The tape tip is good. That's right. Well, I mean, I can, I can do it with a collar, but... Tape is smart. In this case, I'm just going to put a little bit. Yeah, I'm only going the tiniest bit. Um, do I want to use jeweler's screwdrivers for this? The cool part about this one is instead of two screws or whatever, actually the other one had four. So this one has six. So actually the other one was pretty well. The way the other one was uh, put together was nice that, um, guys, what's up with the white washing out? This, what am I seeing right here? What's that? See, God, man. Um, the other one, instead of some of these have uh, the screws in the middle like this on the single ones, and you have it's just like you need some kind of magic in order to even get it in there. Uh, the version of this one that they had was um, it was a lot easier to deal with. It was on both sides. Oh, and that's right, I had to sand this down. Hope this is gonna work. There's, they put like <laughs> gobs of varnish on this thing. I hope I didn't just drill through the pickup that time. <laughs> Hello? Hello?
you know this is crazy so an hour and a half into here and i'm barely got this thing in um i still need to ride my bike all right so this this uh because i did it this way this really gonna suck with these springs because now the the springs are in a totally different place uh it's gonna be nowhere near as much tension so it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit finicky but i have this set so i know where i want i want this thing to be um i'll set i'll set the tremolo i'll set the springs first probably without this thing okay so here's the other part so we do not want this ground wire to bind on the spring so how are we going to deal with that all right so should i pop my soldering iron in and put it on the underside that's one way to deal with this these are active pickups i may not need to ground them but the other point is i could put it way on this edge right here let me fire up oh the iron's still on from uh from the heating up the um heating up the loctite so I think this thing actually has a ground tab. Would have been nice if they just put enough long enough wire to, so you didn't have to worry about this. Like, it's kind of scary how this is. Okay. So, I could take out the spring claw and put it on the underside. That would be one way to do this and really be sure about it. It's probably the smartest way to do it. The way I don't want to, because man, it's going to make everything harder. But that's probably best option so where's my did i just put my screwdriver sorry yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to get the ergonomics down here sorry guys and uh you know i know steve i didn't have one but i keep thinking i want to put one of those scalar sure cloth things in here okay so one bummer here This is probably something that should have been done before anyway. This is, I know it's not convenient to put these on the bottom, but it sure makes them safer. You don't want anything binding up your spring. And uh, I think in this case, I, I don't know. Do you, are we supposed to not um, ground? I mean, this thing came with the EMGs in the first place and it was grounded to the bridge. So I don't know. I don't know what the wisdom is right now, actually. I, I, I don't know if the people are still saying not to not to ground to the bridge or what so but i'm just going to ground it to the bottom side here and that should be much better but yeah remind me i, I gotta get out and, and get do some riding or something i've just been in here all day and trying to catch up still to my monday i've been going through all this camera nightmare trying to try to figure out how i'm going to do been doing a lot of interviews lately and i just need i need a, I need a better camera set up so i just don't want to spend a car worth of money on camera junk man it's so expensive nobody wants to see my ugly face anyway i want to see like software we work on mixes we're doing we really need so i wanted a camera for doing this stuff this is still a little bit grainy but i, I think you can see okay um so now this thing's out of the way i could actually hot glue it to the i could hot glue that in or something to make it keep it from moving around but now i think we're safe at least that's something i do if, if i ever take the claw out of a guitar i always solder the um the ground wire underneath makes life easier and i know I, I could just pull these pliers out and not even worry about this but i think it's going to be slightly easier if i leave them where they are it's going to take some adjusting but i really wanted that tremolo spring puller to work but uh no such luck. Uh, that one's too big. It looks like it worked real good for um, uh, brake springs on a car. Throttle return springs for sure. 
So here's how it was. It was in an arrow configuration. And I'm pretty sure the spring will hit in that way. So I'm going to... Okay, and I know everybody has their way of doing this right here. For some reason, this isn't reaching the end of the claw. Okay, that's one, and now I've dumped my tremolo completely, unfortunately. Oops. So I gotta buy some food and stuff for tonight. Right. Yeah, I'm a little worried about that ground wire. I'm probably gonna pull it through through the electronics cavity. So this time I could try this one, but then I always end up bending them. That actually worked right there, so I'm just gonna do this again. So let's see where if I put in an arrow, I'm pretty sure it would hit. Woo! I almost lost an eyeball, but I see now I'm wearing glasses. <laughs> <All right>. uh. <laughs> Woo! This is where those those scalar whatever sure claws look really good when you're dealing with this crap. All right, well that worked. So it looks like the tremolo spring is so close to the edge. Ah man. All right, so I'm gonna pull those pliers, and the tuning's gonna be all messed up. I want to get um I want to get the Tremolo stabilizer to be a non-issue, so I'm going to pull that forward in a second. Let me get a tremolo bar. Now, I had to get the antique bar because um, Floyd Rose doesn't make an oil slick um, push-in bar, and I hate the screw-in ones. So I'm, I'm, I can still put the screw-in one in. It just doesn't go in as far as I'm not super confident with it, but I might, I might do that because... This is oil slick, and this is oil slick, and so is the nut. How, how can I have an antique bar? And that's the closest to the oil slick I could get, but... Okay, so let me look at how this one is. So it's dumped a little bit forward. I'm going to plug in a tuner. <clears throat> Find the cable. Turn off the iron. So let's get this is going to be 28. Oh no, 28. Let's plug uh, hooking up Reaper right now. Is that 28? Oh, it's 26. 526. Yep, there we go. Okay, let me get um get some knobs. Oh, I don't want to paste the reference. Okay, I'm gonna add the display capture. Tune. Okay. There we go. That down. Put up one. And I only want a very small amount. Now, is it Alt that does that? Oh, that's not what I want to do. Okay. 
Yeah, let's just stick it up here for now. Put retune on here. Ooh, and hopefully you can't see what's on the screen because you're not supposed to see that yet. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So, first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this thing from the equation. And how am I gonna do that? So what I'm gonna do then is uh, hopefully the Allen wrench will work now that I kind of got it a little bit looser. I'm gonna pull the um, I'm gonna pull the plunger in away from the tremolo bar. Oh, that is still hard to turn. <laughs> I'm not sure this Allen wrench is going to handle it. Unreal, man. This Loctite is no joke. All right. Oh, am I going the wrong way? I want to pull it out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna level the tremolo first, and then I'm gonna shove this thing up to it. So in order to do that, I I want to make sure that this isn't touching at all. I know that the instructions usually tell you to do this a much different way. You use, use actually using the playing cards is actually pretty smart. You um, put cards in there and, and just keep tightening until they fall out. That's not a, really not a bad idea, but um, a little bit more anal, I guess. So, wanna, wanna get this? I wanna get these springs to where the tremolo is pretty much sitting flat. Okay, so the tremolo's level right now. Okay, and if you if you see what's happening right now, it, it's because I already had this thing pretty much set this way, and um, it's you know it looks like I just got crazy lucky, but but really. Because we, you know, I already wanted it pretty much. I had it already set, right? So he's acting funny. Is he acting funny? Let me see where that is on the 12 foot. No, that's pretty good, actually. So, maybe... Remember, also mess with the uh, tremolo springs, right? Um, let's see. Okay, I think I think that's just about where I want to have it. Let's let me. Uh, I'm gonna unlock the the locking tuner, the lock nut, and. Um, So if it dumps much forward or much back, um, then I'm going to have to redo things. I think I want to move it back a tiny bit. I'm going to find out. Let me see how. I really don't like the fine tuners on these on this Floyd Rose Pro. It's the only way I could get oil slick. I'd rather have a Floyd Rose original, honestly. I thought I wanted a Pro really bad until I had one. <laughs> I really like it. It's 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 cheap feeling, man. It feels like junk. The Ibanez ones are way nicer.
Uh, see, this, this is the problem. See, I, I had the window set wrong. I had it set for 30. Set it for 100 if you're getting like a low A string or you're tuning a bass guitar or whatever. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm afraid that's going to make all, all of them jump up. Yeah, see, that's a little bit sharp. The A string has, the low A string has so much tension, or there'd be a low B if you had a regular tuning. Um, has so much tension that really affects the other strings. But yeah, I had this fully floating for a while, and, and it was really, it was a lot less trouble than I thought it was going to be, but I just, um, I'm just too paranoid. I don't want this stuff happening on stage, like I can't tune or something. It's just, it was just driving me nuts. So my tremolo is where I want it to be. If I could just have this come, have these, uh, in fact, let's, uh, let's see if there's some way that I can do this without crushing the tremolo. If I could just have this touch the, barely touch the tremolo, that's, that's ideally where I'm going to have it. So let's, um. I'm gonna I'm gonna back this out until it hits the um until it hits the tremolo until it hits the sustain block whatever and uh, acetone it one more time because it's still oh real bugs this this acetone cap keeps falling off it's just terrifying. It's not good. Ooh. I don't know if I want to get acetone on the wood. Is that going to hurt the guitar? Maybe. Oh, you know, I forgot to do one thing. This came with... I already had one pad on here. This little uh, pads for the... Um, sorry. For the... For the... Uh, little ball bearing in to hit the tremolo. Um, so it doesn't clunk too hard or whatever. And I should have put those on there when I had everything off, but... Not ideal because I had the old one on there. There we go. So now I'm going to have three, but only two of them are actually going to be contacting. I really like the idea of this, this round ball bearing kind of end. It's not perfect, but I've seen that a lot today. Maybe that stays on there. Um... You know, I've never used these before. I always had them slam right in there, but I'm starting to think, you know, tolerances are a little bit better than I give them credit for, and uh, it's okay to have a little bit of give. It'll, it'll still get pretty much in tune. Okay, so now I'm running into the problem where I don't think it's hitting... Maybe it's hitting the bar. Me, I'm going to back this one into it as well. So I want it just barely touching the bar or the block. And if if it's too loose, it's not really going to touch because it's just not going to have enough spring pressure to hold it up against there. And the idea is that this the tremolo sustain block is going to be hitting this thing and it won't be able to dump any further forward. In order to really make sure that happens, you really want to put a lot of spring pressure, more spring pressure on, on the tremolo springs. I see people who do this very loosely. Uh, I'm going to, I'm a little bit, like, I want it to slam a little bit harder. Okay, so here's resting position. I don't know if it's in tune or not. We'll find out. But when I touch it, see them, they're both moving. 
this probably isn't enough spring pressure to actually do much right now. I mean, it's a little bit, but I'm going to increase this tent pressure by a lot, and then I'm going to tighten these springs down a little bit. But let me check tuning again. Okay, so we're definitely touching because notice that the tremolo is now, it's, it's raised forward a little bit because of that, because of the, the plunger, and um, it's gone flat. So, and I'm not liking how how far forward it is. So I'm gonna actually bring the uh, I'm gonna bring this plunger back out a little bit. It feels so loose, like it can't possibly be touching. But this might be that the springs are too loose. And if I really want to be sure about this while I'm working on it, um. There's no reason not to put a ton of spring pressure on, so that's what I'm going to do right now. So notice I'm turning the other screw. So I'm shortening the, the length of the spring, which is bringing the spring pressure way up. And I, I can feel it right now. It's very, very much touching. And so one, one way that I tried with the other one was just to get it set first with one of these plungers. But, um... It's not as finicky or as bad as you think it would be. So, no real big deal here. But I don't think that this one's really touching the bar right now. I think it's, I think it's the other one. So let me, I'm gonna pull up on the bar and see where it goes. Oh, actually, no, it is moving this one first. Okay. okay. Set it again just feels so loose like it couldn't be. Okay, now it's not hitting either one. Let's see what the tuning's like. Still flat. Okay, why is that? If they're not hitting... What am I hearing? Yeah, this sticker's no good. But I'm not sure why. Unless I did something up front. I'm going to tighten this screw down. Let's break down this tiny bit. Let's see. Might be, um, well, actually, here's something to consider. Okay, I'm going to hold the guitar up by, um, by a horn in tune. I'm going to put it on the cradle. A little bit flat, right? But let's, uh. Remember, right now this thing is fully floating. When when the pressure really hits it, it will. You'll 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 hear it hit, and you'll 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 see it lock. So, again, I'm gonna try and get this as close as I can to to the bar. It would really be good to have some light behind there. But what I want to make sure is that nothing is possibly modifying this so that it's dumping forward more than it would be so i just want it to barely touch okay so let's see no wrong way
Oh, stop move. Okay. Yeah, touching one of them, but not the other. Now when we when this is getting close to finished, I'm I'm gonna put a lot of or I'm gonna put more spring pressure on. I'm gonna say a lot, but I'm gonna put more spring pressure on. This is where it gets really finicky, and this is the problem with the dual one. You gotta. You gotta try and get them this to be the same right but um there could be a little bit of preload spring pressure that could alleviate that a little bit but it really hasn't been that hard to get them that close though so let's just see what we're tuned to now so it's dumped it forward a tiny bit so what i want to make sure is that there's enough spring pressure that when i put this a little bit more tremolo spring pressure it's not going to just completely dump the tremolo backwards that's that's where it gets ugly um so i'm going to just turn these in a quarter turn it's not much but it's it's enough to load it onto that seat and what i don't want to see is this thing just that quarter turn pushing this thing out so if this thing is way sharp right now then it's pushing on the bar okay now you can hear it hitting right so what i'm going to do I'm gonna tighten these springs up a lot. The 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 counter force springs. So I'm gonna hold it in place, but I'm gonna shorten the the um, shorten the length of the spring. You can set these super tight without hurting anything. It just makes it harder for you to pull back on the tremolo. But if you want to be sure. You can get these things so tight that you can you can just about break a string and still be in tune. Yeah, I feel so much better with the Loctite because this thing can still spin around just fine, but um, it's not going to spin itself out very easily. But after this, it's really fine-tuning. Like, how, how tight do you want these springs? It's not bad. It feels like the bar I'm not quite hitting hard enough, but then see I don't want to be able to tap on the bar and see it and see the tremolo move. So is the problem that it's not touching yet? Do I need to put more spring tension on here? Did tightening up the springs maybe move this in a little bit? Like I can hear it hit. But I don't know that it's, it's enough pressure to bring it back. Your temptation is to tighten up the spring so much that um, that you know it's going to hit. But, but when you do that, then you just made your tremolo super hard to pull, you know. Um, and you don't want it too crazy. See, if I, if I took that bar out right now, this would go sharp because I, I have tightened those springs up. But I am going to tighten them a little bit more. So I'm just going to be a little bit conservative at first with this. Kind of give it a little bit more. So I'm going to tighten them each one with another quarter turn. I want to be sure that this thing hits when I let go of the bar. And uh, now I'm going to just tune it with it in my lap. See, that's binding is the pits. And for some reason, this is flat now. All right, so it might be pulling too hard. I'm going to 
That feels pretty good, actually. And that's the other thing. You put your hand on the palm mute, and uh, the tremolo doesn't move. That's kind of a nice thing. But... Um, but let me just see where this is right now. Yeah, this is all over the place. Let's see if this improves by putting the locking the locking the lock nut back up. Oh man, I, I gotta get out of here and get some uh, exercise, but. I put you poor people on this journey with me, so I'm going to finish. Okay, so now the lock nut's locked up. Um, I guess I, you know what, I got to make a, a button on my stream deck for this GoPro thingy. So once you get these things set up right, if your guitar goes out of tune, often the way you tune it is just by hitting the bar. Like, no joke, man. It's just, this gets going good. Okay, and the other question is, did I drill through my pickup? <laughs> That's, uh... Let's find out, huh? I'll know in a second. Let me play Elix here. Springs on pretty tight. You hear that clacking? You can definitely feel it too, so. I'm wondering if there's some way to mitigate that. Now that should have just nailed and absolutely annihilated the tuning of this guitar. But it is working. Really staying in tune. Um, I'm probably gonna loosen up the, the the springs a little bit, but um, what do I have that's? Let me check my other guitar. So my other ones, yeah, one of them I still got a fully floating one. It's a carbon with my uh, EMG 707s in it. Or no, that one's got an 81 and an 89. And when I feel the ones that are dive only, well, that tremolo's stiff. This one's nothing. The question is, does it go back? So there's still a little bit of fine tuning to go. Oh wow. That's pretty good. So for now, assuming I didn't just completely destroy this guitar, I think I'm gonna put this screws back in. I, I might loot like I say, I might loosen these springs later on, but um now it sounds feels pretty good. Throw this back together. And uh, button this guitar up. And then I'm going to pull my 20 inch out and uh, go ride that instead of the dirt jumper. I'll have the dirt jumper in the cart. Now, I, I still, I wanted to rewire my, um, my pedal board really bad. 
Maybe I can do it tomorrow. That was, that was one of the things I wanted to get done today. But uh, I think it's getting late. I have to work tonight. To work a rough job. So, okay, five. Yeah, it's five o'clock. I think I'm going to go to the store and buy everything I need for tonight. And um, let's see. I got snacks. What else do I need? Snacks. I guess I should go down to Times. You know, that's one of the great things about living in Hawaii is Times Supermarket. I'm sure it'll be gone soon. It's uh, it's too kind of family-ish for what's going on around here now. But man, they have the yummiest plates. Friday, not so much, but. these days i'll fix the delay there that's all right all right i'll see you guys later this is actually um boy as soon as i got the loctite off this is great huh but pretty dumb to put that on in the first place i think but i bet you this guitar stays in tune better than my ones that don't have loctite on we'll see i'll see you <laughs>